Hi there, I'm Lee Brainerd. Welcome to Soothkeep. Today I would like to encourage your hearts with another Rapture Nugget. The precious truth that soon our war with the world, with the flesh, and with the adversary, uh, the Satan, the devil, is going to soon be over. The precious truth that we will soon be enjoying sweet rest in sweet everlasting with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the, the Bible clearly presents to us the fact that we have sweet rest coming. We read in Hebrews 4, 9, There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. We read in Revelation 21, 4, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And we read in Revelation 22:12, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. Now, I'm not going to tickle your ears with certainty or high probability that we are going to be going up in the rapture this summer or even this year. Because no man knows the day nor the hour. But I can assure you folks that we are going up in the rapture soon. We are going home soon. And that it well could be this year. It could be this month. It could be this week. It could be today. We are very deep into the stage setting for the tribulation. And I also can assure you folks that no matter how much time we have left before the rapture, whether it's days, weeks, months, or even a few more years, the Lord is going to repay your faith and your patience with infinite reward. Now I want to give you three points to ponder. The first is the gracious view of God regarding your current situation. Now, we do read in Revelation 22, 12, that when the Lord comes, we're going to be rewarded according to our work. However, we have to put this in context. Don't burden yourself with unwise, unfounded fears and remorse over the fact that you're not doing enough. Don't beat yourself up over that stuff, folks. You need to learn to see yourself in your efforts from God's perspective as he looks down here on you and your weakness in the battlefield scene. Now, we do read in Scripture, for instance, in Matthew 12, 20, a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoking wick he will not quench. And we read in Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is the heart of the Lord, reaching out to people who are believers in the Lord, who are going forwards in the things of the Lord, with awful trials and awful pains and awful tribulations, and they're weary and they're tired, and this is God's heart toward them. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, you need to also understand, folks, that merely going forward against the tide of the world is a matter of huge reward. You need to understand that simply staying in the battle despite sorrow and pain and defeat and brokenness, is a matter of huge reward. You need to understand that merely keeping your eyes on Jesus, despite oppositions and trials, is a huge reward. Sometimes it does take most of your strength just to keep moving forwards and not sit down and give up. Now, go ahead and as you have your time and as you have opportunity and as you have strength, 
go ahead and talk with people about the things of the Lord and go ahead and share the light you have and go ahead and be involved in the work of the Lord. But don't beat yourself up, folks. If in your current circumstances, you just don't have a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of strength, a lot of money, a lot of opportunity, just don't beat yourself up over that. Be faithful in your part of the overall war that the Lord has given you to be faithful in. That's all you can do. Don't beat yourself up over the fact that you're not a world-class evangelist or a world-class pastor or a world-class teacher or a world-class mom. We're just not all gifted and called to be that. We're all just gifted and called to be faithful in our current circumstances. And sometimes those circumstances are very difficult. All we can do is be faithful folks on the path that we've been given, according to the call that we've been given, and take the open doors that God has given us, whether few or many. That's all we can do. Now, the second point I want to bring out is that all of our pain and all of our sorrow is going to be gone. We read in Revelation 21, 4, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Now, like many lists in the Bible, folks, you have to understand that this is not an exhaustive list of the blessings. This is merely a representative list of the blessings. And you are perfectly free to extrapolate from here and deduce and infer every blessing that's anywhere in the spectrum of these things that are stated. For instance, not only is, are we going to have the things that are mentioned in this list, there's going to be no more wounds and no more injuries. There's going to be no more inner emptiness, no more malaise, no more jaded hearts. There'll be no more mud, no more crud, no more slogging through ugly, terrifying, bewildering battlefields. No more enemies. No more feuds and disagreements with our fellow soldiers. No more hunger and thirst. No more battlefield lack. No heavy loads. No bullets whizzing over our heads. No mortars exploding nearby. No, no grenades exploding nearby. No more wounded friends. No more wounded comrades. No more injured friends. No more injured comrades. No more spiritual fatalities. Now, the third thing that I want to bring out, folks, is that when that rapture trumpet blows, we're going to receive far better than merely the mere removal of pain. Far better than merely removal from the battlefield. Romans 8.17 says, If children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together with him. Folks, if you are suffering on the battlefield with him, you are going to share in his glorification and his glories. This is not merely getting off the battlefield and going into a comfortable barracks where you're going to have a bed and three square meals a day. This is going home to glory. Glory is only God can make, is only God can give, is only God can share. Another passage which illustrates this blessed transformation of our situation is 2 Corinthians 4, 17, one of my very favorite passages. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And we read in Psalm 16, 11, that at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. 
So understand, folks, we are not merely being released from the prison cell of this life, but we are being formally adopted into the family of God as an heir of God and a co-heir with Christ Jesus. This implies a royal inheritance, royal privilege, royal wealth, royal freedom. And remember, folks, that true wealth is the freedom to pursue any God-honoring thing your heart desires to pursue. And you're going to have that spread out before you for all of eternity. So in conclusion, I trust that your hearts are encouraged by this rapture nugget. I trust that your hearts are encouraged by this sweet rest that awaits us when our current battlefield struggles and battlefield efforts are over. So for the meantime, folks, keep slogging through the mud and the crud. Keep slogging through the pain and the trials. Keep facing the battles and the bombshells. You've got one short life to be good soldiers. You have one long eternity to be fulfilled human beings. Keep looking up. Time is short and soon we fly. Eyes wide open, brain engaged, heart on fire. We'll see you next time.